Hello! My husband and I and our three children took a three-week trip out west last summer and had the time of our life. We rented an RV and explored so many things. And to get ready for that, we obviously had to pack. What I packed did really well for us and I would like to share those things with you now. So I'm going to go over the clothes that we packed, some other items that were necessities that we packed, and then at the end of the video, I'm also going to go over what you need to make sure you have in the RV or purchase once you have access to your RV. So come along. Welcome to VO's Travel. Where to go and what to see. With kids. <laughs> okay, we are going to start with clothes. We, on our trip, we went almost up to the Canadian border and then as far south as Yosemite National Park and the Nevada desert. So our temperature ranged anywhere from 20 degrees at night and chilly, maybe 30 or 40 degrees in the mornings and evenings. And some of our days were 50s, 60s. We had um, 60s and 70s along the Pacific coast. And then once we were inland a little bit and further south, we did have days of 70 and 80 degrees. So we experienced all kinds of weather. Let me show you what we packed. I did want to pack super light for our trip for one reason, for maybe two different reasons. The main reason was we flew from our home to our first destination where we rented the RV. So we didn't have the RV at home to pack full with all of the goodies that we needed. We had to take everything that we wanted with us on the plane. So in that regard, we did not want to check big luggage. We wanted to take everything with us on carry-ons so that the airlines did not have the opportunity to lose our luggage. We had it with us the entire time. We were literally at a different location every single night of our 23 day trip. So if luggage was lost, we just weren't going to have anything with us. So we wanted the security to know that what we were taking on the airplane with us, we were going to leave the airplane with. And that was our biggest reason for packing light and for only taking carry-ons. So we each had a backpack and we each had a small carry-on suitcase that fit in the overhead compartments. And like I said, we packed crazy light and it worked out well. Another reason for packing light is that we didn't have a whole bunch to keep track of once we were on our vacation or once we were in our RV. So let me show you what we packed. Each of us took one pair of shorts. I had athletic shorts for my boys. I had a pair of denim shorts for my daughter. And then my husband and I each took one pair of shorts as well. We didn't take any crazy patterns with us for the fear of kind of mismatching. So everything that we took with us was pretty basic, pretty basic colors and everything just kind of um, worked out together. So one pair of shorts per person. We took one pair of sweats or athletic pants for my boys. And my daughter and I took one pair of leggings. We each took one pair of nice jeans. So if we went to a nice restaurant, we could wear one nice shirt with our pair of jeans. And that was kind of our nice clothes for our trip. We did visit a lot of national parks on the way. It wasn't strictly national parks. We did cities like San Francisco, Denver, Salt Lake City, Seattle. Um, but we did do some hiking when we were in national parks. We did national parks like Yellowstone, Glacier, Yosemite. So we kind of needed a lot of rugged wear as well. We are not crazy big hikers, but we did do a few decent sized hikes that required athletic clothes or things like that. So along those lines, we each took two t-shirts. We each took one long sleeve shirt and we each took one hoodie. We made sure that our sweatshirts were hoodies so if we were in colder weather, we would have this hood on our hoodies to help keep us warm. We also took one swimsuit per person. Um, this was a big one. We went down the Oregon coast and like I said, started in Seattle after we got over to that area and down the Oregon coast and there was lots of rain. Luckily, well, I take that back. There was potentially going to be a lot of rain. We only had one day of rain on our entire 23 day trip. We lucked out. 
but we knew that we were going to be by the ocean. We knew that there's potential for rain, so each of us took a raincoat. And one thing I wanted to talk about raincoats is when you are searching for raincoats, a lot of them will say water resistant. Those do not keep you dry. It needs to be waterproof. So make sure you are buying a raincoat that is actually waterproof. Read the reviews, be really picky about your raincoat because like I said, a lot of them are water resistant and that's not gonna keep you dry. North Face was a good brand. Another brand that I found was uh, Free Country for my raincoat. Check secondhand stores or check Facebook Marketplace for these items that normally would be really expensive but you can get for a lot cheaper, especially because we were a family five and none of us had raincoats to begin with. So, all that to say, we each took a raincoat. We also each took a, and these we bought new also, we each took a puffer, what are these called? They're called packable puffer down jackets or down coats. They do have down in them. They're very thin and lightweight, but they do keep you very warm. We made sure to get them with hoods, like I said, for our hoodies to keep us warm, to keep us a little extra warm in places where it was cooler. And all of those puffable, puffable, packable puffer coats come in a bag like this. So they condense, and this was this is my husband's coat, a really big puffer jacket coat fit in this little bag. So this was all the space this was going to take up. And it is nice that they come in these little bags as well. One brand that I found that I really loved was an Amazon brand. Their brand, Amazon Essentials, was a very good quality. It worked for us and there was tons of colors to choose from. They were about $20 without hoods, $25 with hoods. So this was a necessity and so glad we had them. We each took um, a pair of pajamas. Actually my boys, I think they just wore their shorts to bed. Um, my daughter and I each took a nightgown. I didn't want to take two pieces of pajamas because one piece is easier. We each took a pair of gloves. I did not get waterproof gloves because we were not planning on playing in snow. I just wanted gloves to keep us warm if we were on an extended hike or when we were in the northern part of the United States. So just a pair of cotton gloves worked well for that. Shoes, that took up the most space but shoes are absolutely vital and having different types of shoes for the different types of country we're going to cover was a necessity. So we each had a pair of hiking shoes or boots. These were my sons. You don't just want to hike, if you're a new hiker, you don't just want to hike in normal tennis shoes. They will slip on rocks. They're not made for all kinds of terrain, but hiking shoes are. And a lot of times hiking shoes or hiking boots will be waterproof also. So crossing streams, things like that. So hiking boots, hiking shoes were a must. We also took hiking sandals. So we each had a pair of hiking boots. We each had a pair of hiking sandals. We did take normal walking shoes. And we each took a pair of walking sandals. Now let me tell you, when I was researching what shoes to take in regards to my walking shoes, I got all excited. A friend sold me on the pair of walking shoes, or actually they were sandals that she loved. So much so that I went out and I bought those type of sandals. And I had them about a week or two before our trip, so I was able to kind of walk in them and make sure I wasn't gonna get blisters from them. But I did not love them once I got on our trip. I wish I had my Birkenstocks that I left back home. So in regards to shoes, either buy them way beforehand and make sure that you absolutely love them and that they're not gonna give you blisters, or take shoes that you already know and love and that you're comfortable with. So. To recap in the shoe department, we each took a pair of hiking shoes or hiking boots, a pair of hiking sandals, a pair of walking shoes, and a pair of walking sandals. And a little tip on that, even though they might not have been the most comfortable, we chose our largest pair of shoes to wear on the plane so that it didn't take all that room in our suitcase. Same as our sweatshirts. We all wore our hoodies and I think our puffer coats. We took those on the plane and it can get chilly on planes too. So that actually worked out well. So make sure you wear your biggest clothing items and biggest shoes on the plane and that will save you room and packing. We took a collapsible hamper and this one just folded flat and laid right on top of my small suitcase and it, it took up maybe an inch if that. This was nice, it was sturdy, it had handles. We did not use the shower in our RV because that took up a lot of water. 
So I just opened this into our RV and kept this in the shower and that's where we threw all of our dirty clothes. Now mind you, we wore our clothes over and over because like I told you before, some things we only had one of. So we only washed it if we spilled something on it or if it was really gross. We did make sure that we stopped at a campsite that had laundry facilities at least once a week so that we could wash all of our clothes and we weren't wearing the same dirty clothes for three weeks. That reminds me, one thing I like to take on all of my vacations is a stack of quarters. I go to the bank and get a roll of quarters. You can use these for so many things on your trips. We love, my kids love to collect those little smashed pennies. So I always have quarters on hand for those little smashed penny machines. We also used quarters for our laundromat when we did wash our clothes. Um, and sometimes you'll see in another video that I've done about what I pack for kids on all of our trips, I play a little game with our kids um, with quarters. So I always make sure to have a bag of quarters with us on our trip as well. If you are not familiar with Norwex, look it up. It is a way to clean even cleaning bacteria with only water. They are special cloths that all you need to do is get them wet and it will clean any surface. So you don't need to bring any kind of cleaning supplies, any kind of special hand wipes. These things do it all. So I highly recommend you check out Norwex. So each of us had a small little reusable baggie with our Norwex cloth in it. Moving away from textiles, make sure when you are on a trip to have paper maps and that might seem old school, but out West specifically, we were without cell service for probably a good one quarter of our trip. That means we could not pull up maps. We could not pull up directions. We could not pull up GPS. So having actual paper maps of the different locations you're going to be is vital unless you just want to be roaming around in the mountains not knowing where you're at. So that was really important. Masks, we are in the days of COVID. I packed a bunch of disposable masks. And one nice packing tip was I pack a lot of things in Ziploc bags because once we got to our location, if we needed a bag, Ziploc baggies come in handy so many times. If you have something wet that you need to take with you and you don't want to get other things wet, Ziploc bags work well. If you need a small something to keep something in, Ziploc bags work well. So I would pack a lot of our things from home in Ziploc bags. And then when we got to our RV, I had a lot of Ziploc bags we could use. I did take this in my purse. Uh, we needed an EpiPen. I had a chapstick for everybody. I had a small thing of lotion, some women products. Like I said, we did do a little bit of hiking and I found these Coleman Campers toilet paper rolls. So that was just kind of for an emergency use. Thank goodness we did not have to break any open. And then I have a little thing of sunscreen that I could get to here. And I'll talk more about what we actually bought when we got to our location, which did include a full thing of sunscreen. So this is not the only sunscreen I took. Once again, put it in a Ziploc bag and threw this in my purse. Each of us had a small thing of Kleenex. On all of my trips, I always take a travel bottle of ibuprofen and a travel bottle of Dramamine for motion sickness. That is always good to have in hand. Even if you're not gonna use it or might think you might not use it, bring them. I always get the orange chewable ones. I took a small first aid kit. Now, these, this is a Welly brand. It's a tin case. I did get stopped at the airport for having this. They saw that I had a big metal, not necessarily big, but they saw I had a metal case in my bag and I had to show it to them and show them everything that was inside. So maybe not take a metal case like I did. Inside of this, I have normal band-aids. I have Steri strips in case we were out in the wilderness and got a big gash we needed to close up. I have a small tube of antibacterial ointment. I have tweezers. Um, oh, this was great. They make Tylenol in powder form for kids and adults. So this was great to take on the airplane because we didn't need to take any kind of liquid medicine with us. Once again, I'll tell you all the things that we did buy once we got there, which did include some liquid medicine, but we can't fly with that. So these powder medicines worked great. So the first aid kit, and this is great to take with us obviously on our hikes too, when we were out away from anybody and anything civil. Pens, I love pens, I love journaling, I love these Sharpie pens. They come in all different kinds of colors. They don't bleed through paper. They don't even bleed through Bible paper. If you know how thin Bible pages are, they don't even bleed through that. So these are great. I always took a little stack of pens. 
In regards to the journals that I took, each of our family members has a passport to national parks. I do have a video on these if you're interested or have not heard of them, but basically you go to all national parks and you get a stamp from that location telling the time and date and the national park that you visited. So this was very important to me. I did have an actual journal for each of our kids and a journal to write in for myself. Journaling, like I said, is really important to me, so that was a must. Even if my kids only journaled one or two sentences a day, that's more than they had before, and it's always fun to go back and see what we wrote about um, on our trips. I don't know if I would take this again, but I made this travel flower press. So I took a flower from each location, or a plant from each location that we went to, and one of these days I'm gonna make a little book with all of my pressed plants and flowers that I collected on our trip. This was a little over the top, but I did make each of our kids a personalized Shutterfly book and started off with day one, talking about the itinerary that we were going to do and see that day, and I asked questions about our day every day. I also, for instance, if we were going to Yellowstone, I made a Yellowstone word search and had it in our day that we were at Yellowstone. I did coloring pages, I did maps. Um, here was a fun little thing also at Yellowstone. This shows the animals at Yellowstone and where in the park you can find them. And then I did make this little checklist on this side of the page. When we did see one of those animals, you could check it off and tell us about it. This did take a lot of time, but I'm so glad that we have it. Um, <laughs> I included little mazes. Anyway, this book, it, it was really fun to have, but it did take a lot of time. I would say I would share that book with you because you can share projects through Shutterfly, but it's so specialized that you would have to do a lot of work to change everything around for your itinerary. Every one of us took a hiking backpack. This is my daughter, she's the youngest. This is the smallest one. This was a child size backpack and this brand K-U-Y-O-U, we got it on Amazon, worked great for her. All of our hiking backpacks had bladders in them for water on our hikes with these little tubes that came in super handy. And then when we were not hiking, we could take that bladder out. It gave us a little bit more room and we could wear our backpacks around the city or whatever and fill them with everything that we needed. Um, something else that's different about hiking backpacks, they usually have a little whistle for an emergency. They have all kinds of compartments and they do click around your waist too. So this was important. All of my children took their backpack on the airplane and besides the journals that I had them take and the, the Shutterfly book that I made, they could take anything else that they wanted in their backpack. So if they wanted to take a small stuffy or they had a book to read, they had control over what they put in their backpacks. I was the only one that had two bags like that. I had my normal hiking backpack and I also took a backpack as my purse. And I do that typically when I'm on vacation because I don't wanna carry around a purse that has all these different kinds of compartments. It's just not really easy to use on vacations. So I have this cute backpack as well, and this holds my wallet and everything else. So I put actually this backpack inside of my hiking backpack so that I only had my one personal item on the plane. And then once I got to RV, I was able to separate them. And then um, this is what I took, like I said, everywhere I went. Besides the time side, I needed my hiking backpack. So this purse came in handy. I could just put it over my shoulder and we're off. And I've got my hands free to do whatever we are doing. Um, charging cords, very important. But the one thing I do wanna point out is you need to know what type of electric outlets you will have in your RV. Are you going to have normal outlets like this so that you need one of these adapters? Are you just going to have, is it a newer RV and just have USB ports? Our RV was newer, but it still had a cigarette lighter in there. So we took this cigarette lighter with a couple USB port options with us as well. So make sure you know the plug situation in your RV and take all of the necessary cords that go along with that. Okay, now I'm going to tell you what you need to make sure that you have in the RV once you have access to your RV. And these are things that you do not wanna fly with but you need to make sure that either your person that you're renting the RV from is supplying these items or you're actually going to the store once you get to your RV to stock your RV because some of these things might sound a little funny, but let me tell you, we used every single one of them. 
So the first thing you need to make sure you have are cleaning supplies. Is the RV going to come with a broom and dustpan? Cleaning supplies, wipes, all of those things. I mentioned Norwex before. Like I said, I love Norwex. You can literally clean 90% of the RV with just two different cloths, your Enviro cloth and your window cloth. So if you have those and you wanna take those with you, you're pretty much set except for a broom. So just make sure that you do have access to cleaning supplies. Ask the person that you're renting the RV from if they are included or if you'll need to go bring your own for those. Paper towels, toilet paper. You do have to have a special kind of toilet paper for RVs because their system is not made to handle real toilet paper. So make sure you get RV toilet paper. Tape, you will not realize how many times you will wish you had tape if you do not have it. A pair of scissors, super glue. We used super glue. We had to repair something and super glue did the trick. So just a little bottle of super glue, well worth your time and money to have that on hand. A lighter, if you're going to be camping, you're in an RV, gonna be starting at campsites, you need a lighter. Um, in that same regard, do you have camp chairs? Does your RV come stocked with camping chairs? If not, go to Walmart and buy cheap little $5 ones, but you'll want camp chairs once you're at your campsites. Fans, this was something that was unexpected with us. We did have a fan in the RV. We do like to sleep with a little bit of noise, but there were some nights that we were boondocking and boondocking means you are camping in the wilderness. You don't have electricity. You don't have water. You don't have anything. Your fan's not going to work if you don't have electricity. So you might want to consider buying a battery operated fan. If you are used to sleeping one, especially if you do have a night or two where you don't have electricity in your RV. More things that you need to make sure that you have in your RV when you get there. If you are doing any type of hiking or going to any national parks, bear spray is a must, especially at places like Glacier, Yellowstone. Um, check with the national park before you go to make sure that bear spray is allowed because I believe some places like Yosemite National Park, bear spray is not allowed. Um, but bear spray is very important to have on hand. One tip I was given is to ask the airport that you fly into if they have any on hand that they have taken from previous customers because you cannot fly with bear spray. So in some cases, somebody might have tried flying with one and they took it away and they might have a stash at the airport. That was not the case for us, but it's worth asking because bear spray can easily be 30 or $40 and you're probably not going to use it. You can get that at any sporting goods stores or Walmart in, that, in those areas. Okay. This saved my life on our RV trip. I scheduled a few grocery pickups. I scheduled one for the day that we flew into Denver. We got our RV and our first stop was our grocery pickup. I had an order of three carts and bless those Target lady souls. They came strolling out to our RV with my big huge order for our groceries, our sunscreen, all those things completely stocked up within one hour of getting our RV. That saved us probably two or three hours shopping. Another thing to keep in mind with grocery pickup, figure out how much things are going to cost in the states that you're going to and if they have any kinds of extra fees like recycling fees or bag fees. The West Coast states like Washington, California, and Oregon did have a lot of added recycling fees and bag fees. So we made sure to buy our bottled water and buy most of our supplies before we got to those areas in the states that did not charge those fees. And then once we got out of those states, again, we restocked as well. So we didn't have to do much shopping in those states knowing that they were going to be more expensive there. Oil spray to cook with is a must that came in really handy while cooking in the RV. Ziploc bags, I did take some with us. I did purchase another box or two while we were there. Aluminum foil, lots of water. We stocked up on lots of bottled water and normally in our normal everyday life we do not drink bottled water we fill up our own containers but being out and about I think we purchased six gallon things of water because in the nights in the days that we were boondocking we were not going to have that much water we stored those underneath the bed and underneath our dining room table we also went through probably three or four maybe even four or five 24 cases of bottled water so water was a must. For cosmetics and body care, I purchased small shampoos, small conditioners, small body washes with our grocery pickup, so I did not have to take any of those liquids with me. 
And I did buy about three each because when we were taking showers at our campsites, the boys obviously went in one bathroom and us girls went in the other and so we couldn't share. So I needed to have two or three shampoos and two or three conditioners for each of us, same as body wash. So those were included in our grocery pickup and then at the end of a trip, if we didn't use it all, we just tossed them. We didn't even waste our time bringing them back with us. They were about a dollar a piece. Same with deodorant, so we didn't have to pack any deodorant. I just purchased a small little travel size deodorant with our grocery pickup and at the end of the trip, I tossed to that as well. Same as hair products, hairspray, hair gel, any kind of those things I purchased with my grocery pickup. They were just small trial sizes and we threw them away before we left. I did have baby wipes on hand and I don't have babies, but we used those for so many things. I had a small pack that I kept in my purse and then I had a couple large packs that I just kept in our RV for quick cleanup from little spills or whatever. You would be surprised how many things you can use baby wipes for. Liquid medicine was something that I purchased through our grocery pickup as well. Um, I have a son with allergies, so I purchased some children's Benadryl. I also purchased children's ibuprofen. Once again, I couldn't travel with those because those were over the ounces that were allowed on planes. So I picked those up once we were there. I did order a bottle of ibuprofen because this was not gonna last our whole family three weeks. I mean, it could, but we wanted to be prepared. Uh, I bought sunscreen when we were out there. I also included bug spray with our grocery pickup. Um, think about salt and pepper, spices. You can buy little camping size, almost pretty much disposable salt and pepper shakers. They come in those little cardboard rolls. Salt and pepper. What kind of spices do you use? Do you use garlic a lot? Do you use onion powder a lot? So a couple things like that might be worth it to put in your grocery pickup as well. Paper plates, disposable cups, plastic silverware. This, we do have a conscious mind when it does come to recycling in our house, but this trip, it was just another story. Uh, we did go through a lot of disposable items because doing dishes every day in the RV was, was very time consuming and it was just a lot easier since we were on the go to have a lot of these disposable items. Um, ketchup and mustard and any other condiments that you may want. And then paper towels. Those things are almost a must when it comes to stacking your RV. So keep those things in mind, write those things down so you have a list of everything. And then obviously you're gonna need groceries, but that'll depend on you. My advice is to majorly plan out your meals. And then when you know what meal you're going to make, only buy those specific ingredients. And I thought I did that well, but at the end of our trip, we, we actually were able to donate it to a food bank because the lady that we rented our RV from runs a food bank. So all of this stuff got donated, but um, I had so much food left over. So really plan out your meals specifically and only buy the items that you know you're going to use. So that about sums it up. If you are planning an RV trip anytime in the near future, have so much fun. I think we're gonna go again in a couple years and I can't wait. It was the time of our life. Go, go on an RV trip. The memories that we created, the experiences we had, it was so much fun. We talk about it on a weekly basis, all the things that we experienced on our trip. So if you have any questions about specific other things that you may be wanting to pack, let me know. I'd be happy to answer your questions. And as always, I hope that you remember to choose joy and take all of the pictures.